Hey there guys, before we get into today's review, I wanna encourage all of you to subscribe right now to this channel. You can do so by clicking here. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And please share our channel with your friends. You can do so by clicking those share links down at the bottom. And once again, click that subscribe button, just kinda of copy the link and send it to a buddy of yours. Now, without any further ado, let's get into today's review. Hey there guys, my name is Brandon from Gearist.com. Thanks so much for joining us for a few minutes. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the 33 FA from ASICS. When ASICS launched their 33 line in 2011, they were aiming to get into the natural running shoe thing, kind of capitalize on that market that was out there. Since then, because of so many other brands getting into it, as well as brands that specifically cater to the natural running shoe market, ASICS in the 33 line has been a little bit, in my perception at least, lost in that shuffle. But this year, however, they've come out with a trio of shoes, the 33M, the 33FA, and the 33DFA, which we're gonna talk about now, which aims to focus on a larger audience and kind of bring those shoes in that particular line, the 33 natural running shoe line, to more prominence within the ASICS lineup. As always, we're gonna start with the outsole, and the 30 33 line gets its name from the 33 joints in the human foot. And the outsole is the first place where we get an inkling where that is the case with this shoe. Made from ASICS high abrasion rubber or AHAR, the outsole is pretty much a full contact outsole, which you can see there. There are no real significant cutaways except for these flex grooves we're gonna talk about in a second. And a little bit of an area right here in the arch which has exposed EVA part instead of that AHAR rubber right there. About those flex grooves, the 33FA has four primary major flex grooves and kind of six secondary flex grooves. The four majors are one, two, three, four, and then the secondary flex grooves are kind of like one, two, three, four, five, and where's that six? Well, I have six right here. So they're aiming to really let that foot work with the shoe. It's a really great uh, concept, and, and the fact that it comes through in the outsole into the midsole is a really good practice that I liked. A lot. As far as coverage goes, pretty much every surface on the outsole of this is covered by that AHAR rubber that I mentioned, with the exception of this little spot. One of the things that is puzzling to me about that spot is that that is going to be a pretty high traffic area. So what I probably would have done is made for this spot over on the medial side to not be covered in rubber and kind of a swap around. Not a big deal, but it's going to you know play into durability a little bit. Now speaking of durability, this actually does a really nice job. With about 40 miles on it, there's pretty much no compromise in the outsole there. This high abrasion rubber does a nice job of staying around and making it appropriate for a high mileage trainer like this. Now those big flex grooves that I talked about a second ago, those lie atop what is called a six fluid axis system, which is meant to have, you know, a lot of flexibility in it as it pertains to the foot itself, but also to the ankle and letting the foot behave the way that it wants to. The added bonus of that fluid axis and flexibility technology is that it kind of counters the fact that the midsole material being a little thicker, which we're gonna get into in a second, that limits it, but the fluid axis kind of counters that, making it remain actually very flexible. I should also mention that several of my runs in this shoe have been in rain. So on pavement, whether it's sidewalk or asphalt or what have you, this does a nice job. The traction is really solid. I didn't have any slips or anything like that. And I wouldn't hesitate to see this getting around four or 500 miles, also depending on the efficiency of the particular runner's gait. Up to this point, the A633 line has had drops anywhere from 10 millimeters to six millimeters. But in this guy, they have come down and got it to a nice, really happy four millimeters, which I really like a lot with 20 millimeters of stack in the heel and 16 millimeters of stack in the forefoot. This not only makes, again, people like me happy, but it also is gonna make it kind of much more in line with the precepts of the 33 line. Quite obviously, the midsole of the 33 FA is made up of two different types of foam. You have this white EVA foam here, and then this red fluid axis foam right here, which is much more soft. When I was first getting into the shoe, I really didn't know what to expect. And to be honest, I expected something that was really squishy because this stuff is pretty soft, the red foam here. However, when combined with the strobal construction and the instep, the, the ortholite right here, the kind of sock liner, which I don't think is actually ortholite, but it's A6 version of that, the conform dry, those combined with the firmer outer foam here, right here, the white foam that you can see, it actually gives a pretty good amount of cushioning, but it's not squishy, which was something that I was worried about. It actually highlights that responsiveness 
through a bit of cushioning. So if you're looking for a more cushy feel, but without losing too much of the responsiveness, this is a good way to go about that, which we're gonna talk about a little bit more in the ride section in a minute. Moving on to the upper, in recent years, it's quite obvious that engineered mesh has become the way to go for a lot of shoe companies when building their uppers. Now, in the case of this particular shoe, the outer mesh here that you can see, part of a dual layer mesh, is made from an engineered mesh. If I hold it up there to you, you may be able to see. Rather than making the mesh flex in different places, as some meshes, like fly knit from Nike does, what they've aimed to do is just make it stronger and reinforced in places. Now we've actually seen this same exact mesh copied in other shoes or just used in other shoes because people probably source from the same factories. But in this case, it's also backed with a softer mesh that on the interior makes it really, really comfortable against the foot and actually pretty breathable. The foam on the upper, which can be a pretty big sticking point for me, is actually ideal for what I like to see. There's not a ton of overly stuffed foam in the tongue, especially not around the collar here. The heel counter, well, I mean, there really isn't one. I mean, yes, there's that part of the shoe, but it's completely squishy and malleable. There's just not a whole lot happening there. Rather, they tend to rely on these overlays that are bonded to it, kind of a microfiber overlays that you're gonna have a hard time seeing because it's black on black. But in parts, they've actually also worked it into the logo. But that heel counter is nice and still remains, you know, present. I think that a lower volume foot might have a little bit of trouble staying in this a little bit, um, just because that heel counter is so flexible, but they might not. I think there's enough place to tighten down in the laces to account for that. Something else they've done that's really nice with this upper is they put the kind of tongue into contact with where would normally be tongue gussets, um, right about there, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but what they've done is they've made this kind of interior booty-like construction that really does a nice job of keeping that kind of moving with you feel. Overall, for me, the upper did a really nice job of molding to my foot and moved well with me. With regard to fit, the 33FA is built on an oblique last. Now what that means is that on the medial side, it's actually pretty straight, while on the lateral side, you can see, particularly in the front third of the shoe here, that it curves in quite a bit. While I didn't have any problems with the toe box per se, I would like to see a little more expansion on that lateral side and kind of carry that just a little bit straighter, kind of like that. I know this seems to be a theme in a large majority of my shoe reviews, but I really like that amount of toe splay up there. As far as sizing goes, I didn't have any trouble in my size 11s. However, in reading some other write-ups about this shoe, I have read where people would sometimes recommend going up about a half size. Keep in mind that most retailers, including online retailers like Roadrunner Sports or Zap for which you can find buy links down in the description, they're going to have great return policies where even if you've run in the shoe, they're probably gonna work with you on getting it exchanged. Now, the ride of this shoe is something that was very interesting to me, and this I feel like kind of can border on hyperbole a little bit. Part of the reason for that is because based on the construction, based on just pressing my fingers into this foam here, pressing my fingers into this foam and the fluid access parts on the bottom of this shoe, I really expect it to be quite squishy. However, when it comes down to it, it's simply not. Now, I think that the reason for this is if you take out the sock liner here, toss that on the ground, you've got a little bit of conformed dry foam, that blue stuff that you can see right in there. But if you press on that, underneath it, you can feel an actual strobal construction that's really very, very firm. And that rests atop this red, this softer red foam that we talked about in the midsole. What's great about that is it's still going to give you the cushioning, but because there's that firm base, that solid foundation, you're going to have something hard to stand on. So you still get the benefits of the cushioning, but your foot doesn't sag down into foam like it might with a overall squishier shoe. This is a really good and kind of actually paradoxical ride to the shoe that I really liked. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world with the greatest ground feel, but it was something that was surprisingly good and responsive. Basically, I think this is a really solid overall daily trainer, especially high mileage for those people that need or feel like they need a lot more cushioning, but still want that firm foundation to stand on. For a high mileage trainer that's gonna be complementary to the other shoes in this line, the 33M and the 33DFA, I think, <laughs> to something that complements those shoes well for such a high mileage and durable trainer. I think that it's price tag of $110, which we've actually found for as low as in the 80s, if you check our buy links down in the description, those prices are actually really, really solid. I think that ASICS has done a nice job with this, and if you've held off on ASICS because of loyalty to other brands or for whatever reason, it may be worth trying if you're looking for something that has the amount of cushion that you're looking for with this, but also has some responsiveness and a firm foot base. My question for you guys today is, what
what have you tried from the A633 line or is it just not even interested you? Let's hear it in the comments section down below. Guys, if you've got any questions about this or any of our reviews, don't hesitate to ask by emailing info at gearist.com or reaching out to us by visiting gearist.com right here or following us and reaching out on any of our social media outlets, which you can see right over here to my right, your left, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel as I mentioned at the top of this review. Thank you so much for doing that if you already have. Also, if you'd like to see something reviewed here on Gearist or if you've got any questions for our Ask Gearist segment, don't hesitate to let us know. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys again so much for spending a few minutes with us today and we'll see you next time.